Bible saints of God. It's indeed a pleasure to be before you again on this Resurrection Sunday. As you all know, that this is the day that we celebrate what happened on that third day morning. Early that morning, when they went to the tomb, the tomb was empty. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, had risen, just as he said he would in the days before. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. Let's thank you once again, the Lord, for this, this privilege, this honor, the Lord, to come to you and worship and praise him, the Father. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died on that cross, Heavenly Father. But yet, on that third day morning, he rose again, Heavenly Father, just as you said he would in the scriptures. And we just come this morning asking that you forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. We just want to thank you right now for being so good and kind to us. The Lord, you didn't have to, the Lord, but you have watched over us, the Lord. You've led us and you've guided us, the Lord. And you, you've led us back to this Sunday morning, Heavenly Father. We just want to thank you, the Lord. For being our protection, the Lord, being our shield, the Lord, you just being our food, the Lord, you, you've done everything for us, the Lord, and we just we just hold all of our trust and our faith in you, the Lord. The Lord, we just ask you to just bless those who are listening this morning, the Lord, listen to your word today. I want you to just bless those and search their hearts, Heavenly Father. The Lord, if there be any impurities or anything that's not of you, Heavenly Father, hatred or evil thoughts in their minds and their hearts, the Lord, we just ask you to just Touch their hearts, Lord. Remove those things from them, Lord, and, and put in their place, the Lord, pure hearts, the Lord, the minds that want to know you, the Lord, minds that want to adore you, the Lord, minds that want to love you, the Lord, so that they may love all of their fellow men, the Lord. We just want to thank you once again, the Lord, for, for this church, the Lord. We want to thank you for all churches, the Lord, that's rooted and grounded in your word, the Lord. We want to thank you, the Lord, for this day, the day that you have made, the Lord. And we just want to thank you once again for the privilege to be able to come and praise and worship you, the Lord, and just magnify your holy name. These things are in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Let us say amen.
two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day? Then they remembered what he, when he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. Yes, this is what happened that very early Sunday morning. The women had went and they didn't to, to put spices on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But when they got there, he wasn't there anymore. But they did meet two angels there. It says that they were dazzled in robes. In other words, these were, if you read on further on down, you would find out that these were two angels who had met them there. And, uh, and they was asking, why are you so surprised? Why are you so puzzled not seeing him here? Did, did he tell you back in Galilee that he wasn't going to be here on the third day that he was going to rise? And just as he had said, that would have happened. And so these women was excited about this, but they also wanted to go back and tell somebody what had happened. So they immediately stopped what they was doing and they and they rushed, they said they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples. And everyone, not only his 11 disciples, there was some more people there too because it said that everyone else, what had happened. And I, uh, in the 10th verse, it tells who these women were. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. And uh, several other women had told them a possible that happened too. But you know what? They didn't believe the women. No, they didn't believe the women because it said that it was Mary Magdalene, like I told you, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and the other Mary, and some other women which told these things to the apostles. And the 11th verse of that same chapter, it said, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. So they didn't believe it. it it's kind of amazing that they had followed Jesus and followed his teachings. And it wasn't long ago when he told them everything that's going, that was going to happen to him. And uh, everything was actually happened just like he had told them it was going to happen. But when it got to this point, they had kind of lost their faith. A lot of things that had happened, they had been, they had been um, whipped themselves. Not only Jesus had been whipped, they had been whipped themselves with a lot of frustration and anger at the people. They had a lot of things. You can imagine a lot of things going through their mind. Their friend has been crucified on that cross. And so at this time, it was probably at their weakest moment. And uh, here, here it is three days later, these ladies went to the tomb and his body is not there. So they were still kind of confused on what was going on. And, and they just couldn't believe it, what the women had said. Say, and their words seemed as idle tales. And they believed them not. But look at Peter. We always mess with Peter. But Peter, I don't know if he was one of the 11 that didn't believe him, but it for surely it got his attention. But when we look at the 12th verse, it says, Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulchre. In other words, he, he ran as soon as he heard it and processed it, he got up and he ran to the tomb. And stooping down, he it said, and stupid down, he, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves. So in a way, he seen the clothing there laid by themselves. He seen the, the wrappings that had they had enclosed Jesus with. They, he had seen all those things. It said, it said, and departed. So Peter left. Wandering, it said, wandering in himself at that which was come to pass. In other words, he was still wondering what had happened. Peter was still wondering, now what, now what didn't happen? He was still a little confused even after he seen what he seen. His mind could, it was so much going on, I guess his, his mind just couldn't go back to what Jesus had told him. But listen, to, look at the 13th through the 16th verse. I'm going to read this in the New Living Testament. 
New Living Translation. It said that same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Amos, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, listen, look at what happened. It says, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. Ain't that something? Jesus himself came and started walking with these two men, the two disciples who was walking to Amos. But God kept them from recognizing him. So they was walking with Jesus, really not knowing that they was who they was walking with because he didn't let them know who they was walking with. So in other words, these two men, or two disciples, it didn't say men and women, it's just two, two followers of Jesus, they was walking to Amos, and, they, and they, all of a sudden this man come up, who was Jesus, started talking with them. And uh, that's, that's something how uh, Jesus just showed himself. So he showed himself, he showed himself to, do, to these two disciples first. And they were discussing the confusing events that was, had happened that day. Can, can you imagine what they was talking about? I mean, how they was, you know how we talk today about things that, that had happened. We just talk and talk and come up with all these scenarios and things like that. That's what they were doing. And they thought that they had understood everything about Jesus up until that point. And at this point, they was confused and worried. They had hoped that they had hoped that Jesus was the Messiah who was going to uh, rescue the people of Israel. And they had just, you know, they had, it just been, been a long week for them. So all of their hope was kind of dashed at that point. But here comes Jesus walking with them. And you know what? Jesus began to ask them questions. And this part I like right here because this is Jesus talking. Jesus and he said, 17 verse, I'm sorry, in verse 17, Jesus, he said, he asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? In other words, in King James, he said, what manner of communication are these that you have to one another as you walk and are sad? So in other words, they were sad because he said they stopped short. Sadness when it was written all across their faces. Sadness was written all across their face. So Jesus knew what, that they were sad. And Jesus knew what they were sad about. But he was trying to get them from point A to point B. He was trying to get them to recognize that something good had just happened. So they shouldn't have been sad. And so this is what was going on. So uh, let's read on a little bit further. Verse 18 and 19. Let's go there. After Jesus had asked them what they was talking about, it said, and one of them, in the King James, it said, and one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said to him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? In other words, he was asking them, Man, how, why do you know what has happened here? Haven't you heard what has happened in Jerusalem? You must not be from around here. Because in his mind, everybody should have been heard of what, ha what has happened this week, what has happened to Jesus Christ. Every, everybody should know. And the other version says, it says that, I'm reading in the 18th verse right there, it says that you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all these things that have happened in the last few days. Then Jesus says, what things? You see how Jesus says that? He said, what things are you talking about? Then he said, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles and was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. In other words, can you, can you imagine how Cleopas and, and, and the other disciples talking about Jesus at the time? I'm, I'm pretty sure at this time, it probably was a smile on their face. Just uh, reminiscing and remembering of all the things that Jesus had done, all the things that they had witnessed Jesus do, the, mir the miracles, the teachings, how thousands had gathered when uh, Jesus had taught. This was a, that put a little smile on their face at that time. But look at verse 20. It kind of going to go down 
to verse 24. Of, they still are talking to Jesus on what had happened. He says, and, and how the chief priest, they fill in Jesus in on what happened to him. <laughs> it says, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted, look at 21, but we trusted that it had been he who should have redeemed Israel. And beside this, today is the third day since these things were done. In other words, Jesus already knew about all this. In other words, like I just told you, they thought he was going to be the, the Messiah. And he was. The one who's going to redeem Israel. And they said, beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Certain women also of our company made us astonished. This, this is what happened today now. Which were early at the supper time. And they that found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And a certain of them which were with us went to the search and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. So that would confuse them. Now where is Jesus now? They had, they had, um, they had, People had went to the, the to the tomb and didn't see Jesus there. They, they, they had, that was really confused. They really didn't know what was going on, even though they was walking with Jesus. But Jesus wasn't finished with them yet. Jesus was taking this all in. He already knew. And they told the story to the T, too, because Jesus didn't correct them on none of that. But he is going to set them straight on some things. But he didn't correct them on their story, because their story of what they just told them was exactly true. Everything they had said was true. Now it's Jesus' time to talk. And I want y'all to listen very carefully to these next few verses. Jesus is ready to preach to them now. At the same time, he's going to be comforting them at the same time. Verses 25. This is Jesus talking. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ have to suffer these things and to enter his glory? In other words, he said to him, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering into his glory? That's what Jesus was telling them. You know, it had been told from the days of Moses that Jesus was going to have to go through these things. Then Jesus, he wasn't finished with them yet. Let's go to the 27th verse. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded, Jesus expounded all of them and all these scriptures to them, things concerning himself. Verse 28 says, And they drew nigh unto the village whether they went. And he made as though he would go and follow. In other words, Jesus told them the whole story. As they walked with Jesus, Jesus told them every, all the scriptures and all the Psalms and everything that, was, that had led up until this third day. Jesus had brought all this to light to them. Don't you remember this? Don't you remember that? It was, in, it was in, over here in this chapter. Over in Psalms, they talked about me. Uh, they talked about me in Isaiah. They talked about me in all these scriptures. And as they got closer to the to Amos, no, they was walking to Amos. As they got closer, and uh, Jesus was about to uh, keep on going, but they constrained him. They kept him from going. Look at verse 29. Because they were liking what Jesus was saying, not knowing that it was Jesus, but it was giving them more hope. The more word they heard, the more hope they begin to have, the more faith they begin to have. They started being revived again. They started getting happy. Verse 29 says, But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward the evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to travel with them. So in other words, they talked Jesus. Jesus probably was going to stay with them anyway, but they talked him into staying with them. 
because they said that it's getting kind of late in the evening. And so, come on, come. They didn't say Jesus because they didn't know he would. But they said, come on, come on in and chat with, with us for a while. Because they loved the way that he was talking. Jesus was reeling them back in. And that's what I like about this story. Jesus still talking. And it came to pass, listen, verse 30. And it came to pass as he sat at the table with them. Jesus sat at the table with them. He took the bread and he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And look at that. This same said and happened not long before this during the Last Supper, y'all remember. After he had took the bread, blessed it, and break it and gave it to him, their eyes were open. In other words, their mind went back and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight because they hadn't. Didn't nobody do it like Jesus did it. And I'm, I'm sure that they, at this point, they had realized, it says, and their eyes were open and they knew him. So at this point, they realized who they were sitting at the table with. They realized who had been walking and talking to them. They realized it was Jesus who was preaching to them the messages that they heard. And so at that time, their eyes were open and he vanished out of their sight. Jesus vanished out of their sight. So they didn't see him no more at that point. Look at verse 32. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us? while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. Ain't that something? As Jesus talked to us through this scripture, through the Bible, our hearts are burned because it give us a, a hope. It give us, the word give us hope. Jesus give us hope as he talked to us through the scriptures. And look at this now. They was excited. They had been revived at this time. It because in verse 30, Three, now they just got to Amos now, it's a seven mile journey here. It wasn't no just right around the corner because these guys were walking. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. They went back, they had to go back to Jerusalem at this point because they had to tell somebody. When you get good news, when you get a word, when you have experience that these guys had, you got to tell somebody. And so they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered to, together and them that were with them. So it's actually it was more than eleven, but the eleven disciples were there and some more. And look in verse 34 it says, it's saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared unto Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. So they knew Jesus by how he broke the bread, when he broke the how he blessed it. They recognized, we, we, we should recognize Jesus Christ. Ain't that right? So I'm glad today that these guys was able to be revived by Jesus. Jesus wants to revive us today. And he does that through our word, through our faith in him, through our hope. Don't let, our, don't let nothing dash our hope because when he promises us something, when he tells us something that he's going to do for us, we need to just believe what he says. We need to believe that he's going to do what he said because he's never lied. He's never, he said he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. But this erased the dots that they had in their mind. They knew that they was hearing the truth because they, was, they heard it straight from Jesus Christ. So this, all this erased the doubts in their mind and the disbelief that they had. And walking with Jesus, it just revived them and made them more excited. And they just couldn't get, they just couldn't uh, move their feet fast enough to go back and tell their friends. And look at verse 36. It says, and as they thus spake, and while they were speaking, just about what they was telling them, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, peace be unto you. So that's what Jesus is saying to us today. Peace be unto you. But look at verse 37. It says, but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. They still had some doubt in their mind. They thought they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? In other words, he was, why? You know, God knows our thoughts. He was like, why are you doubting me, really? Why are you doubting that I'm here? I'm actually here. 
And verse 39 tells that. This is Jesus talking. He said, Behold my hands and my feet. That is I myself. He says, Handle me. And in other words, touch me. Touch me and see that it's me. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see me have. In other words, he said, I'm here in flesh and bones. Look, look at me. Look at, look at my hands where they pierce me in. Look at my feet where they pierce me there. And verse 4 it said, And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have ye here any meat? In other words, they were still, still a little doubt there in their hearts. Still a little doubt in their mind. Even though they could feel and touch, they was just amazed that he was there because they had witnesses there. They had seen him hanging, they had seen the blood coming from inside. They had, they had seen them give up, they had seen them give up the ghost. They had felt the earth shake. They had did all that. They, they had witnessed all these things. They had seen that the stone was rolled away and Jesus was there. But yet, Jesus still had to prove himself. He said, you have him to meet here? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. The reason Jesus took that fish and asked me to have any meat, it wasn't that he was hungry, but he just knew they should know that ghosts don't eat food. The spirit don't eat food. He was all flesh and bone. It was Jesus Christ. Verse 45, we move it on. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus is behold, Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all the nations beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with the power from on high. So in other words, when Jesus showed up, he showed, him, showed himself to them wholeheartedly. He showed them that he was there in flesh and bones, and he, he preached to them, he reminded them of all the scriptures, and and everything, before it was over with, they knew that they was talking to Jesus Christ. They recognized him as Jesus. They knew that this was Jesus. And, he, and verse 49 says that it wasn't over, it wasn't finished yet. Because he says, and behold, I send the promise of my father unto you. In other words, that's the Holy Spirit he's talking about now. The promise of his father would be the Holy Spirit. But he say, but wait a minute, just hold here in the city. He say, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with the power from on high. In other words, just stay still for a minute. There's some other things that got to, got to happen. But for now, this is the third day. This is the resurrection day that we told you about. This is the resurrection day, resurrection day that your forefathers had been talking about. And you are witnesses to it. That's what Jesus is saying. So this let me know that if we become confused and by our circumstances that we are in, or situation that we're in today, that we can always, Jesus is always ready and willing to take a walk with us, just like he did with these uh, two disciples here on their road to Amos. And uh, he will set you on the right path, no doubt. And when he does, he sets you on that right path, great and miraculous things are going to happen in your life, and you're not going to be able to wait to tell somebody what Jesus did to your life. How he got you back on the road of righteousness. So uh, I'm going to read in your hearing. Not only did Jesus walk. Let's go to Isaiah 53 and 5. Not only did Jesus uh, come back just to be with us. Just to walk with us. But he came to walk in our place also. And the reason I know that because if we go to 53 and 5, it says why Jesus took that walk to the cross. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So not only did Jesus walk with us, not only does he walk with us, but he walked for us. He took that walk to the cross for us. He hung on the cross for us. He was piercing the side for us. He, all of these things happened to him for us. And he laid in that tomb for three days for us. And he got up for us. Jesus walked with us. So why not? We ought to do it daily. We ought to have a daily walk, a daily talk with Jesus Christ. At this time, we're going to ask Evangelist Tanique Craft to come as she opens the floor for discipleship and prayer. Thank you. Just as Jesus consoled them as they walked from Jerusalem, he's doing the same thing today. He is consoling us through his word. Um, the scripture says that um, I speak to you through the volume of the book. So he is speaking to us through his word. So the best decision that you can make right now is to ask Jesus to become your Lord and Savior. He, is, he has a perfect plan for your life, and he wants to use you to carry out his will. And some people have a problem with that. Some people think that they cannot be used. Like, I've done so much in my life, there is no way God can use me. That is a lie. He's used so many people before you. Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, King David, and the list goes on and on. None of those men were perfect men. They were all flawed, but God used them to carry out his mission. And he wants to do the same for you. He wants to use you. So I compel you today to make the decision to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And what that simply means is this. Agree with God that you are a sinner. I'm a sinner, God. And since I'm a sinner, I need a Savior. And I want to ask you, I want to ask you, God, to save me in Jesus' name. Just ask him to do it. And then when you ask him to do it, thank him. Thank him for it. And then tell somebody, like these men did, run and tell somebody, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Call us. Feel free to call me. Call my husband. Um, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says this. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The key word is all. He forgives us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So if you made that decision, I pray that you will. Call us and let us know. We'll be happy to pray with you and we'll be happy to walk you through this thing or whatever you would like to talk about. We'll be happy to have that conversation with you. My number, my name, of course, is Evangelist Tony Crab, and I can be reached at 901-412-9875. My husband is Reverend Otwell Craft Jr., who can be reached at area code 901-413-7613. You can call us, you can text us, you can even email us, and our email address will be on the screen. So before we move on, I want to ask that you bow your head in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, oh God, we love you, we honor you, and Lord, we pray for forgiveness of our sins. And Lord, even as we move on through this day, there are so many, God, who's hurting, God. And we're praying for them, God, who's hurting physically or spiritually, Lord, and even mentally. And Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray that you move on their situation. Help, to, help them to know that you are the hope. You are their everything. And I ask that you bless them right now. And Lord, I ask that you tug, tug on the hearts of those who do not know you. Draw, God, as only you can. Draw them, God, to you, to you, God. And then help us, the church, God, 
to wrap our loving arms around all those that you bring. Oh God, we thank you right now. We thank you for the work that you're doing in the midst of turmoil. We thank you for being God and God alone. We love you and we honor you. And Lord, this we pray in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, with that said, um, I want to ask that you may, um, we hope that you want to give to this ministry. And should you decide that you would like to give an offering or you may even have tithes that you want to pay, we want to ask, um, we want to give you the information to do that. You may um, give electronically. If you would like to make an electronic payment, we ask that you send a text message to Sister Estella Dean at 901-831-9224. That's area code 901-831-9224. In that text, please include the following. Your name, indicate whether it's a tithe or an offering, the amount you wish to pay, and your email address. After you've done those steps, you will receive an email that has a secure link. And in that link, you will be able to pay your desired amount. You can also mail your offering. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 5207, Holly Springs, Mississippi 38634. Our mailing address once again is Post Office Box 5207, Holly Springs, Mississippi 38634. If neither of those options work for you, call us. Call us and we'll work out a way to get your offering or tithe. Now finally, before we wrap up, it is Mount Moriah's tradition that we incorporate our children's church ministry into the Easter services. So even during these times, although we're not um, worshiping here physically at the church, we're kind of doing this thing virtually, we want to do the same thing. We want to offer um, that again. So um, the next thing that you're going to see is our, chil our children's presentation to you. Thank you and God bless. Lord, thank you for loving us more than life itself. God, life is hard and uncertain. So much pain, hurt, and heartache seems to surround us. And yet, knowing this, you still really gave up your life and became God with us and God who rescued us. Thank you. Because of your sacrifices, we can spend eternity with you. There is no pain you cannot conquer, no hurt you cannot heal, and no life you cannot transform. Your death and resurrection prove that nothing is impossible for you and that we are more than conquerors because of you. Today and every day, help us to fix our hearts and our minds on, on you. And as we do, please give us more of your joy, hope, peace. We love you and we want to worship you. Hey, I'm just sorry, and I'll be reading a poem, His Love. God sent His Son to take the punishment for all the thoughtless, sinful things we did. Jesus gave His life because He loves us. His love is boundless, sweet, and forever true. On Easter morning, He showed He is our Savior. His resurrection proved He is our Lord. That's why we tell you, Happy Easter. He secured our heavenly reward. Good morning. Today I have an Easter poem that is written by me, and I hope it will uplift your spirit. Jesus died on the cross for us to be saved. He did it for us, not him, then rose again on the third day. They spit, kicked, and made him bleed, but not every once did he even plead. They continuously sinned day by day, not knowing all they had to do was pray. Jesus looked out for us through good and bad, so whenever we talk about his resurrection, you should be glad. Happy Easter. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. 
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. So happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. This is C. And this is Joy. And today we'll be telling who Jesus is. I am. I am who I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vibe. I am the good shepherd. I am the door. I am the beginning and the end. I am the Lord of Lords. I am the King of Kings. I am the bread of life. I am the light of world. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the great I am. Bye. I love you.